I would like to welcome all 30 of you to our uh, first genealogy face-to-face -face of 2022. And uh, it's a new year and we've been, we've been doing this for a while, um, but uh, it's great to be back again. And, uh, you know, for those of you who are just joining us, We've been on since about 1230. If you want to come in and, and chat at the next meeting uh, about your accomplishments or, uh, you know, if you have a individual question for any of us, I mean, we'd be happy to chat with you prior to the meeting. Uh, we are we are very pleased to uh, to have with us today as a, our speaker, Natalie McLean. And uh, Natalie has been doing gene genealogy research for over 45 years. So she's, mm. she's got me beat on that. So she started at a very young age. Uh, she attended the University of Houston and received a bachelor's degree in radio and television. And after graduation, she worked at KRIV TV Fox 26 for 32 years in the film production and news department. She's a member of the Houston Genealogical Forum. Um, and of course, the Clayton Library Friends. She's part of our uh, programming committee. And um, she's also a member and contributor to the Montgomery County Internet Research Group. Uh, she's attended many local, state, and national genealogy conferences and enjoys doing research at re repositories near those conferences. She's passionate about discovering new avenues to help with finding stories about her own family history. And she also likes helping and teaching others how to use available resources for their own family research. So, you, as we noted earlier, this session is being recorded. So if you know someone who wanted to be here but couldn't, you can tell them that this will be uh, published on the Clayton Library YouTube channel. Um, okay, so I put into the chat log a link for the event page. And if you follow that link, it will take you to the handout that Natalie has prepared for her presentation. So um, let me just publish that one more time because I know sometimes people come in a, a minute or two later, they don't get to see that. So you should see that link now um, to our website, which has an event page for this event. And then the handout is towards the bottom of that page. So now that I think all of the business is taken care of, I'm going to hand it over to Natalie. Thank you for having me here. My name is Natalie McLean. Uh, I wanna thank Clayton Library Friends for having me here. And I want to ask you to hold all questions until after I finish the presentation. So my presentation is why you need a library card and maybe more than one. So you need a library card to check out books, eBooks, audio books, magazines, and video. You need to access, you can access a variety of databases and library at home. Check out books by interlibrary loan, access microfilm by interlibrary loan, and download my library apps on mobile devices. You can apply for a library card in person at your local public library. You can also apply for a free library card at some but not all libraries around the state if you're a resident of Texas. Some libraries like Houston Public Library will let you get a card online. First, let's talk about books. The main use for a library card is to check out books, but now you have the option to check out hard copies of books, ebooks, and audiobooks. And since we're genealogists, we're interested in different types of genealogy books. And here are a few examples. There are many different books which can have a specific focus on a variety of areas about genealogy. 
History books can give you information and context about your ancestors' lives in a certain location and time frame. Whether it's about the Revolutionary War and using research from both American and British archives, American regionalism, British folkways to America, or the Great Famine in I Ireland, what did your ancestors do in America's timeline? These books can make you think and question how your ancestors lived during that time. And don't forget that most history books have footnotes and sources, and one of these may lead you to records about your ancestor. Biographies can also give you information and context. Whether you want to find out about exploration in New France, Native Americans, women's roles in the American Revolution, or a Holocaust survivor who immigrated to America told by her granddaughter. Again, a good biography will have footnotes and maybe one of these sources will help you with your genealogy. Letters and diaries will really give you a feel for lives led in the past. And who knows, one of your ancestors may be in one of these books. Even some historical fiction, if done well and is well-researched about its subject can lead you to questions about your own ancestor. Will's War was based on Janice Woods Wendell's own grandfather who was wrongfully tried for treason during World War I in a small Texas town that was full of anti-German sentiment. The book was based on a 1200 page court case file. I heard a talk by Miss Wendell and it made me think about my own German family growing up in Texas during World War I. And I asked my mother if she knew if her family had any problems then. She said she didn't think so since the community was mostly German. Also, I found out that my German, my great grandfather bought about $750 of war bonds. So that probably put him in good standing. I will, go on, I will go over apps that you can use on your Apple, Android, and Kindle devices. I'll tell you about Chrome extensions that will help you locate books. Let's head to the Houston Public Library website. In the middle of the page on the right part, you can get a library card called the Namai Link card. You can also chat with the librarian. In the upper part, you have your account, an events link, location and hours, a research link along with other links. You also have a search box where you can search either the catalog or the Houston Public Library website. I'm searching for a book called Albion Seed. It's available at Houston Public Library, but it's only a reference copy and you can't check out a reference book from any library. So what do I do? I have a more than one library card, so I'm gonna look at other libraries nearby. I went to Montgomery County Memorial website and here's Albion Seed there. If the book is available, it'll come up on the page. And these are physical books, not eBooks. If you notice the first item on the list, it's also a reference copy and I can't send that by library. I can't send that to another library. But if you can see underneath, there are two circulating copies of this book below the reference copy. You can place Place hold and a login screen will pop up and then you'll log in with your library card number and usually a PIN number. After you log in, the place hold box comes up and there's a drop down menu and you choose your library where you wanna pick up your book and click on place hold. I chose the Mitchell Library at the Woodlands. In a few days or weeks, depending on the availability of the book, you'll get an email that will tell you that your book is available and you can come to the library and check it out. I'm going to talk about library apps for your Apple and Android devices. Overdrive, Libby, and Hoopla are ebook and audio apps. Flipster is a magazine app, and Overdrive at some digital collections also have magazines. Goodreads is a book review site, but can be used in conjunction with a Chrome extension to locate books, which I'll talk about later. There are also many other library apps, but these are the primary ones I'll be talking about. Here are the top third sections of the Houston Public Library, Montgomery County Library, and the Round Rock Library homepage. If you notice, they all have a search box in the upper right hand corner. They also have a ribbon of tabs or links at the top underneath their library names. Uh, and you'll click on these tabs with drop down menus to find e library information. For Houston Public Library, you'll click on books and more. For Montgomery County, you'll click on e library. And for Round Rock, it is under the borrow tab. When you search any library site, check out these menu bars. 
Most libraries have similar formats, although some libraries may have them vertically on either the left hand or right hand side. I'm now going to the Montgomery County mobile app page. Libby and OverDrive both work on OverDrive, which operates many digital libraries based on your library's location. Each app shows what app, each app shows what platform they work on. Libby is a newer app for OverDrive. Flipster is also available. OverDrive and Hoopla can also be downloaded on a Kindle. And if you click on the top line, um, they'll, about each type of digital media, you'll get instructions. This is the Houston Public Library website, which lists the apps that they have and what type of content each has. This page is found under Books and More tab, and on the drop-down menu, you'll click Download and Stream. It lists the times that you can have for the loan period and the types of things you can download from them. I'll start with OverDrive, which is available at a lot of libraries around the state. You will need to sign up for an account and download the app to your device. The easiest way to sign up for an account is to sign up using your library card. And I like doing this on my laptop because of my eyesight, but you can also sign up on your tablet or phone as well. Next, you'll search for your library by either name or location. You'll then add your library card number and a PIN number if needed and sign in. I do this for every library card I have. I keep a text file listing for the library, library card number and PIN number. This way I can copy and paste the card number instead of manually typing it in and I don't have to fumble around in my wallet looking for my library card. Usually for the most part, it keeps your information but every now and then it has you log in again. You can add as many libraries that you have library cards for, and here are a few that I belong to. Now here's the Hoopla webpage. Again, you have to sign up for an account and download the app. Click on the Get Started Today app link. Put in your email address, then in settings, which is locate where the cog is in the upper right, click on that and locate your library and add your library card and save it. Now I'll show you how to use the apps. You'll use either the Libby or OverDrive app on your device or devices like your phone or tablet. I have mine on both. You will then go to the digital media catalog to search for your book or ebook or audiobook, uh, just ebooks or audiobooks. Here is the Houston area digital media catalog. Montgomery County and the Rosenberg Library in Galveston is included in this digital catalog. Houston Public Library has their own digital catalog. You can search by title, author, or keyword. Well, here's the Harris County digital catalog. When you search for something, a lot of times a drop down menu appears. This does not necessarily mean that all of these items will appear in the catalog. Here's the Piney Woods Consortium. You can also do an advanced search and you'll have all these different choices. Some have drop down options. One option I like is the available now option and another is the format option. For example, if I wanna just want search for audiobooks that are available now, I would choose those. There are three, these are three screenshots of OverDrive from my iPad. On the upper left, you can see the list of my libraries. And the reason I subscribe to different digital libraries is there's different books in different libraries. However, there's also a lot of the same books in the different libraries, but maybe the book I want is checked out in Houston Public Library. I now can go to Harris County or Huntsville or Round Rock to see if the book is available there. Also on the iPad, I can search for books. And here I search for a book by Nancy Hendrickson and I found two. In the middle shot is my bookshelf of what I have checked out and it tells me when the title will expire. And the third shot shows a history of books that I have checked out. Now here's the listings of genealogy from the Huntsville Library and they have 26 items. You can see at the top of each book, whether it is available or checked out, all of these are available. If it is checked out, you can get on a wait list for the book. Here are 50 results from Harris County Library. 
Below each book, it will tell you whether it's an ebook or an audiobook. 41 results are from the Houston Area Digital Media Catalog. There are some du du duplicates in the results, but each library has some different books. Now you see here, these two have, are checked out because they have wait list listed on them. You can also check out topics from the great courses. Here is one about genealogy taught by John Coletta. You can listen to a sample here. Since this is already checked out, you can click on holds and reserve it. The library will email you when your item is available and the instructions to download. The time depends on how many people are in the hold list. When the item is available, you'll go to your app, locate your book, and download it to your device. This is the Hoopla page for Montgomery County Libraries. They have 315 results for the keyword genealogy. If you find a book you're interested in, click on the book and you'll get a description. If you want to borrow it, click on borrow. On your device, you will then download the book. Here, I looked for finding your roots. I found it in an audiobook, an ebook, and three seasons of the television series. You can filter your results either here or up here by the search bar. Here I filtered the television series and you can check out the series information by clicking on one of the boxes. I selected season one and it has 10 episodes. However, you'll borrow one episode at a time. If you have any of these four streaming devices, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Roku or Android TV, you can download the Hoopla app on your streaming device, sync up the apps with a code, and then you can watch the episode you downloaded on your TV. You can also check out and listen to a variety of songs and music that your ancestors may have listened to during their time in Hoopla's music library. Flipster is a magazine app where you can read magazines on your iPad or Android device. Now you will set this up through your device directly. You can see what magazines may be available on their webpage. I do know that Family Tree Magazine is available on Flipster. Not only can you get the latest issue, but also back issues. You can also get magazines from the Harris County Public Library through the OverDrive app. You'll just choose it in the format area. There are also available for the Houston Area Digital Media and Houston Public Library digital catalogs. I searched for Family Tree and up came Family Tree Magazine, Family Tree UK, and Family Tree Presents. You can also check out a variety of history magazines like American History, BBC History, Smithsonian, and National Geographic, among others, to read about context on timeframes and specific historic events. Again, you would search for your magazine, borrow it, and download it to your device. Now let's take a look at databases. On the Montgomery County Library homepage, you'll click on the Locations tab, which opens up a drop-down menu. You'll click on Genealogy Room, and then click on Family Research Databases. This will open up all the genealogy databases and resources. For beginners, there is a short online course called Researching Your Family Tree. Then there are databases usable only within the library like American Ancestors and Ancestry.com. You can lose, use the library edition of Fold 3, The Gateway to North America about 19th Century New York and Heritage Quest at Home. You can also use Historic MapWorks, the obituary database search for Montgomery County, and the Texas Digital Sandborn Maps at Home. Over at the Houston Public Library website, you'll click on Research, and then we are going to look at the Genealogy and Newspaper Databases. On the Genealogy Database page, there are books across the top relating to either Clayton's latest webinar topic or events relating to genealogy. Below that are databases, more resources, and recommended genealogy websites. Some of Clayton's databases you can access from home are African American Heritage and Genealogy Connect, which has books online. 
read, that you can read online. It also has Heritage Quest at, at home and remote access for newspaper archive. There are program handouts from past Clayton Library Presents webinars, a beginning genealogy packet, finding aids, and links to other useful genealogy websites. Farther down the page, they have recordings of select past Clayton programs on Houston Public Library's YouTube channel. Also, Houston and Texas websites. They have Harris County Research, Houston City Directories, Houston Public Library Digital Archives, the link to the Portal of Texas History, and the Texas Sanborn Maps. They also have Ancestry.com Texas. Free access to the records that have been digitized by Ancestry is available to Texas residents courtesy of the Texas State Library and Archives. Users are required to create a free Ancestry.com Texas account. Click on the link. It will bring you to the Texas State Library and Archives website. Here is the instruction page to sign up for a free account. Now, if you already subscribe to Ancestry.com, you do not need to do this because you can already access these records. This is for Texas residents who do not have Ancestry. It also shows what data collections are available on the free account. And knowing the titles of the data collections is also a useful item for using Ancestry.card's catalog search. Two other databases relating to Clayton Library are these two. The Clayton Microprint Collection is a search engine for Clayton's microprint items. Here, I'm searching for records from Rutherford County, Tennessee. I received 13 results. If you click on a result, you'll get a more detailed description. However, before you get down to Clayton to look at this microfilm, check to see if this film has been digitized by Family Search first. The Clayton Periodical Collection is a search engine for over 3,000 genealogy and local history periodical titles. You can use this in conjunction with the Percy Index. If you find an article in the index, you can search to see if Clayton has the periodical. You can search by periodical title, by state, country, or by family name. Here, I search for the periodical Distant Crossroads from the Hawkins County Genealogical Society. When it came up, I clicked on View Details and the information page will list holdings. Clayton asks that you print the page and bring it with you. If you have a note-taking program like Evernote or OneNote, copy it in there and bring it to your, on your phone or tablet. Now let's look at the newspaper databases. I'm mainly going to focus on older newspapers. There's the 19th century newspapers. You can also check out the Houston Chronicle and New York Times Historical Archives. And if you have ancestors in the financial world, there's the Wall Street Journal Historical Archive. Also, you can search in all databases and click on America's News Magazines. If you click on this page after you sign in, you can check out the Dallas Morning News and Houston Chronicle archives are here as well. There are several early African-American newspapers located under a database called Historical Newspapers, which include the Atlanta Daily World, the Chicago Defender, the New York Amsterdam His News Historical Archives, the New York Times and Wall Street Journal Historical Archives. Your big business ancestor could possibly be in the Financial Times database out of London. Also from London, there's the Times Digital Archives from 1785 to 2014. And there's the Sunday Times Historical Archive from 1822 to 2006. The Civil War era database has a full text of 13 regional newspapers from all sides of the conflict from 1840 to 1865, as well as over 2000 pro and anti-slavery Civil War pamphlets. Some of the newspapers are from Boston, Charleston, New Orleans, Richmond, New York, and Memphis, among others. 
On the Round Rock Public Library website, you'll click on research, and then the drop down menu will click on genealogy and local history. You'll then click on newspapers.com and you can access that website from home. The Round Rock Library has the world collection of newspapers.com that you can search at home using your Round Rock Library card to log in. The database has over 18,000 newspapers. Here at the Rosenberg Library in Galveston, I went down to Galveston along with Jessica to get this library card. You can get a temporary library card online now. You will click on eLibrary to get to the online databases. This is their topical index page and they also have an alphabetical index page as well. And here is the Galveston County Daily News Historical Archive, and they have newspapers archives as well. And I'm interested in that. After you enter your Rosenberg Library card number, you can search the library edition of newspaper archives at home. And this is also available at Houston Public Library. On the Montgomery County Library, here's the main page for databases from A to C, and they have a variety of databases there. Going back to the Houston Public Library website, an important journal archive database is JSTOR. You will log in with your Houston Public Library card and it will bring you to the search page. Here I did a search for Surrey County records and I received over 2000 results. They will not all be genealogical related, but these three articles are from the William and Mary Quarterly. You will click on the link to read the article. You can search for name, location, or historical event. You can also filter by content, date, and subject. Now, they don't have a genealogy subject, so I usually choose history. You can go and go to your article, which you can either read or download, and then you can cite this item with three different styles of citations. Here I can do a browse by title and it lists the dates of when the item is published. You can browse journals, books, and research reports. You can also browse 500 collections on JSTOR, which includes photographs and letters from World War II from the Avell Plotkin collection, Era Diaries by Delia Locke, which are part of the Locke Hammond papers, which include a broad range of materials about the family that found at Lockford, California in the 1850s. This is the Gambier Observer, an Episcopal newspaper from Ohio with various issues from 1835 to 1841. And that's just the tip of the iceberg for the collections of photographs, manuscripts, maps, gazetteers, pamphlets, and postcards that are on JSTOR. According to the Clayton Town Crier newsletter, it said that there are 150 databases Clayton has online. Think outside of the box and try exploring some of these other databases. My maternal grandparents, great grandparents, and second great grandparents were all farmers, so I decided to check out the Agricola database. My Czech and German ancestors lived in Cat Spring, Texas, and belonged to the Cat Spring Agricultural Society, so I searched for Cat Spring. I got two hits. The first is about German settlers at Cat Spring, and the second one is Minutes of a Farming Association translated from German. So I'm very interested in both of these items. By clicking on both of them, I found out they are on microfilm at Texas a and I'll probably contact a and to get more information. However, since the first hit was a thesis, I decided to check to see if it may be on Google Scholar. And I did find a PDF of the thesis. It was 170 pages that I can download. It may not include my ancestors, but it probably will include a lot of the fan club, which is friends, associates, and neighbors. Here is the first page of the thesis. The thesis was not just about agriculture in Cat Spring, but also discussed education, social, religious, and political activities as well. The thesis also included this cool diploma presented to Austin County Agricultural Society for the best annual report of 1879 for the Texas State Fair, which was held in Houston, Texas. So check out other databases as well, and not just the genealogy and newspaper ones. You'll never know what you will find. Now I wanna talk about interlibrary loan, where you can access books or microfilm, among other things. One caveat is that interlibrary loan may be on hold right now at some libraries because of COVID-19. 
let's say I want to read a book, Defiant Brides, about two women on opposite sides of the Revolutionary War. I find out that the book isn't available at Houston Public Library. So what can I do? I usually go to WorldCat to find my books at other libraries. So I click on a library to get the information. I use this page to get the full title, the edition, and the ISB number, the author, and the ISB number, which is an identification tool. I also use interlibrary loan to get newspapers that are not digitized, but are on, on microfilm. There are still a lot of small town and specialized newspapers that are not online, like ethnic, religious, political, industry, and agriculture. I search for a German Texas newspaper called the Texas Volksvotel that's out of Brenham, Texas. For newspapers, you may have to click on several libraries to see if they have the issues you want and also to get information to fill out the interlibrary loan form. My newspaper was located at the University of Texas Library and I want to get the film that covers 1901 to 1903, which is probably two roles. I'll also get the title, the publisher, the town, and the OCLC number, which is another identification tool. You'll then get a notice in a few weeks by either by email or phone call that your films are at the library. Make sure the library you send the films to have a microfilm reader. You cannot take a film out of the library. You also may have to pay a fee for the films. Usually it's a mailing fee, but a lot of times it was free. The most I had to pay was $20 a roll for two microfilms for a total of $40 for the University of Nebraska sent to Clayton. However, it was a lot cheaper than flying to Nebraska. To find the interlibrary loan page on the Houston Public Library site, go to the home page and search the website. However, I usually take my book or microfilm information and talk to a librarian directly, either in person or on the phone at Clayton Library or regular library. Look for interlibrary loan information on your local library's website or call the librarian to see them in person at the library and have them show you how to order microfilm on interlibrary loan and confirm they have a microfilm reader. I want to talk about a few Chrome extensions that will help you locate books. They are good library extension, Goodreads, and available reads, which works in conjunction with Goodreads. You will go to the Google Chrome web store and search for extensions. These are the extensions I am talking about. Since I already have them, it says rate it in the blue book box. I suggest that you always read about the extension. Uh, once you get it, you'll see it if you don't have the extension and it will say add to Chrome. So read about the extension before you add it. And you can do that by clicking on the titles. And here are the ratings, read the reviews as well. It will give you an explanation on what the extension does and has reviews. I would also Google the extension name to see what people are saying about the extension as well. And if you're satisfied, then click on add to Chrome. Library extension also has a website that explains how to use it to search your library. This page shows that the extension is also available on Firefox and Edge as well as Chrome. Scroll down the website to find your library. You'll click on your library that is written in pink. You will then search for your library. Once you find your library, click on install. Now this is done after you added the extension to Chrome and make sure you click on the right library. Now, when you go to a bookstore page like Amazon or Barnes or Noble or even Goodreads, which is a book review page, you'll get a box that comes up like you see on the right side. It will tell you whether the book is available and in what library and how many copies they have. I mainly use this tool for my audiobook searches. Now, this is what it looks like on the Barnes and Noble page. Here is the instructions for available Goodreads. Once you add your extension, it will show up in the Chrome title bar. So here it is up here. Here's available good available Goodreads. Here is Goodreads, and here is library extension. You can then right click on the available Goodreads extension and it will bring up this page of instructions. The extension works on the Goodreads review website, 
Again, you'll get the instructions on how to set up your libraries in which you have OverDrive accounts. Once you have that set up, it will look like this. I searched for David McCullough's book, The Pioneers, and down here is the synopsis of the book, and then here's availability on OverDrive information. Each line is a different library and it shows the book's availability. This way, I can search for a book across several libraries at one time without logging into each digital collection separately. This is a big time saver. With the Goodreads extension, you can use Goodreads right click on any web page to check on a book. If you come across an article about a new book, just highlight the book title and right click. It will open a menu box and you'll click on Goodreads right click and then click on search Goodreads now. If the book is on Goodreads, it will show up in a search on the website and you click on the book. And then the availability on OverDrive feature will then search every library and tell you whether it's available as an ebook or an audio book and how many copies the library has. If there's a headset icon, this means they have it as an audio book. And when you hover over the entries, it will tell you what library the book is located. Library extension is also available on the same page and will tell you what libraries have hard copies as well. Finally, check out every library that is nearby your ancestor's location. Susan Kaufman of Clayton mentions in her beginning gene genealogy webinar that a lot of libraries are doing their own digitization projects or have links to the local area projects. Here are a few examples. Here are transcribed church records at Nesbitt Memorial Library in Columbus, Texas. They also have many other records like newspapers, photographs, and public records. You do not need a library card to look at this material. Also, the Eula and Dale Winterman Library in Eagle Lake has digitized copies of the Eagle Lake headline. You can search all the issues they have through the search box. And again, this is on the website and you do not need a library card to search the newspapers. On the Huntsville Public Library website, here are local information websites for Huntsville, Walker County and East Texas. Here is a list of the libraries that have free library cards. There are more. The easiest way to locate them is to Google free library card for Texas residents. If you live, live out of state, substitute your state's names. Several libraries will let you get a digital library card online. This is for digital books and databases only. If you want to check out books, you still need to go to the library and get a physical card. So the next time you travel somewhere in Texas, check out the library online and see if you can get a free library card. And this is the end of my presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. Well, so, I, I have to say that there was a lot of information packed into that presentation. Yes. <laughs> and I want to say, you know, if you don't have Houston, Rosen, uh, Galveston, and Montgomery County, go online and get a library card. You know, you don't even have to leave your house to get a library card to get these three, you know. And there's also Manson and Northridge and Hills in up in North Texas, but that's mainly for books. But these you want to get for databases. And so let me unshare this my screen. Okay. So um, I think Mazella's question about the Round Rock Library card was answered by George. He says, according to the website, you have to go to apply in person in Round Rock. Yeah, uh, the, only the ones that had asterisks by them, you can apply online. Okay. Uh, you have to go in person, you know, and, and I, I, I mean, I made a trip to Round Rock because I wanted to get newspapers.com for free. Now, it's not the full newspapers.com, but it has 18,000 newspapers and it's helped me a lot. It has a lot of my, uh, I found a lot of my great grandfather stuff um, from Rogersville, Tennessee in there. So- and, and which was that again that has newspapers? Uh, it was the Round Rock Library. In Round, Round Rock. Rock, okay. So is, is that kind of unique in Texas that they are the ones that have newspapers.com? Yeah, uh, Jessica and I both have looked for <laughs> newspapers.com at other libraries. 
right now, uh, the only one I have found there, it may, there may be one somewhere else, but you got to make sure it's a library. Not all libraries will give cards to residents of Texas. Some you have to pay a lot, you know, mm -hmm. library card and some don't even have, you know, the thing is, um, like I went to Austin, Austin is really expensive. Although I think they now, you know, charge a cheaper one just for e-library, but why pay for a library card when there's many other libraries out there? So, you know, when we used to be able to travel around, <laughs> you know, if I was going out of town anywhere, um, like if I was going to Austin, but when I found out about Round Rock, I made a special trip when I used to go to the Williamson County, um, genealogy seminar every year, you know, and I happened to go there to their library and I asked them, Whatever you know, year. at the newspapers.com desk and um, I happened to ask them, um, I, you know, I was really happy, you know, and I, I talked to them, but I said, well, I want to see your database. And they asked me, do you want a library card? And I said, oh, well, I live out of town. I live in Houston. They went, well, you live in Texas. You could get one. And I went, can I look at newspapers.com at home? And they said, yes. And so that started this whole journey then, you know, wow. of searching for library cards in Texas. And, and we're really, mm -hmm. and we're so really Texas, you know, to have this many library cards available. There's another question here. Okay. Uh, Kay Arnold has said, I have an ancestry account, but, but not the overseas data. Uh, any hints that involve the global feature are not available to me. Is there a way I can access the overseas sources for free? Uh, I don't really know about that because I'm not really about ancestry. Um, so, so Mitch, maybe you, you can, you can uh, go to the library. Actually, and you can go to the library. You can go to the library. I think the library edition does have the world. I think you can do. Can you answer that, Mitch? Yeah. Can you repeat that for me, please? Um, the question is, does the Ancestry Library Edition have access to the world records? I, it, I think it does have some, but not, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not the entire collection. It, it's yeah. kind of a, uh, a curated collection of, of records that they make available. Uh, mm -hmm. I have seen some, like some Irish records and some German records. I've seen German you know, records. Show up if, yeah, if you if you happen to access them, but it, it's not everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have access French records from uh, the the library edition, mm -hmm. but you have now they've they've shut off the you can't access ancestry from home anymore. That is on December thirty first. So now you have to come yeah. to the library to get to look right. at it. So Sue Kaufman just posted in the uh, in the chat log. Use the card catalog and Ancestry to search by country to discover if it contains anything for your country. And Lori Hampton says, "I got White Right Library this week online. Just fill out the form on their site. Good for one year." Yeah, White Right. White Right is another card I have. Where is White Right? Yeah, it's up in North Texas as well. I think it's uh, outside of Tyler. Yeah, and um, one of the cards, I can't remember if it's the North Richland Hills or the Mansfield, it's only good for five months. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, when COVID, I, I just started checking out libraries to see if I could get library cards. I've got 15, you know, all those library cards I showed at the end, I have have, and I think I have two, two more than what was on that list. They can also so, have so when they're limited time like that, say they're limited to five months, does that mean that mm -hmm. you only get it for five months forever, or do you have that, to renew? Um, I haven't renewed that one, so I don't really know. Um, I I would just try and uh, I would call, you mm -hmm. know, and email. Um, now I have renewed um, the one year ones, and I want to tell you, I went to Montgomery County a couple of weeks ago when. When COVID was down, you know, and people were starting to come to the library, they limited their um, library card. It went down to two weeks. And I was like, oh, no, it's two weeks. But somehow I did find a year thing. And so last night I went to it and it, it's gone back to a year where you could get it for a year. So if you want your Montgomery County card and you don't need physical books, 
go get that e card and go online and get a library card. Because one reason why I'm doing this, um, sometimes, you know, I, I've watched a webinar and there was, um, it was about um, Indian Eastern, Eastern Cherokee uh, records on full three. So I got real excited. I went to Houston Public Library and they were down for maintenance. And I went, no, you know, and all that. But I had Montgomery County. So I went over to Montgomery County, went on full three there. So it's kind of like when you get all these multiple library cards, if you can't get them, and sometimes, I don't know, for some reason, um, every now and then I can't get a database to work. I don't know why, but every now and then it doesn't work. You know, I'll go to another library and go to the database there and it works fine. So it's kind of like a backup for your databases too, when you have multiple library cards. And one other database I want to, I want to mention, and I saw that Houston have it, has it. I didn't, it did, they didn't have it. It's called the EBSCO Hobbies and Crafts Database. And if you go to it, um, you have to log in with your library card. And if you go to it, at the top is um, publications. So you, you want to click on publications and then you want to choose subject, put genealogy in there and you can get, look at issues of um, internet genealogy and family history. And it's this, you can look on your computer and you can download each article um, as PDFs. So if there's an article, you read about someone had talked like, I came across the genealogist's website and listed some of the articles that they published. And I thought, oh, I'd really like to read that one. And it was a back issue of internet genealogy. Well, I went to the hobbies and crafts um, database and I found it and I downloaded it and I was able to read it. So that's another good database, but I had to cut it out. I couldn't include it because of time restraints but I really want y'all to know about the, it's called Hobbies and Crafts, EBSCO Hobbies and Crafts Database. Um, looking for it in the H's. And Houston Public Library has it now. They didn't have it then. And even though Hoop, uh, Houston Public Library has Hoopla, they don't have books and eBooks. Their Hoopla only has music and movies and television you know, and video and get, I think games maybe. Um, but the hoopla at Montgomery County has like the books and ebooks, and you saw it had 315 um, uh, different hits for genealogy. Although some of those, I'm sure, are like novels and all that. It's probably not a full 315, but they had a lot of genealogy books over there. So, so well, I thank you so much, Natalie. This is this yes. has been a ton of information, and and we're we're going to have to have you come back and revisit this topic because there, it's so rich. Mm -hmm. And I can see the look on Gay's face. It's like, yeah, I, I need, I, I need a whole other session on this at least. Yeah, well, so, people, uh, people don't use their library cards enough, and they don't really right. stuff is on there. You know. Okay, so I, I have a couple things that I need to do before the hour ends, and um, I, I want to acknowledge um, Mitch for offering to demonstrate Ancestry Library. We probably need to do that in a future session, Mitch. So program, yes. you know, make a mental note of that. We'll get Mitch on the calendar for uh, an Ancestry Library Edition presentation. Um, the, the other thing that we wanted to talk a little bit about was uh, upcoming programs. And I think, uh, Jessica, you had mentioned perhaps uh, discussing a little bit about what we have coming up as far as our uh, participant sharing events that we're planning for the coming year? Sure. So last year we had near the end of our time together, we did one where we shared some of the best things we had found at Clayton. And I think a lot of people have found value in that meeting and people just really enjoyed hearing the small little nuggets of what people have found because it gave them ideas of what they could find. We're going to incorporate that more this year in the 2022 and the first one will be February the 3rd. And because it's February, we decided to have a Valentine's theme. So we want everyone to look for interesting marriage licenses, marriage records, um, 
The theme is love, marriage, and divorce. So you can also look for divorce records and just uh, share those with us during that time. It's going to be kind of structured. So what we want you to do is once you find one that you want to share, it could be um, something that was elusive to find, something that gave you a new piece of information that you didn't know, or just an interesting record that we can learn more about. So when you find it, send it to 1VP at ClaytonLibraryFriends.org. We'll compile those into a PowerPoint and give everyone about five or 10 minutes each to talk about their favorite marriage, divorce, or other record about love. So I'll put my email address in the in the chat box. So start looking for those and share them with us uh, by the end of June. Well, let me look at the calendar. Let's say turn those in by January the 28th and we'll have time to compile those for the meeting. So that, you know, I, I, I think in terms of song lyrics and whenever I, when I heard you talking, it was like love and marriage go together like a horse and carriage. Nick, I'm so glad to have a compatriot in that kind of activity. I have friends who go, no, no, you can sing. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to get together and have a sing-along game. Okay? There you go. <laughs> I'm a, a sing-along person, too. I, I think music all the time. <laughs> Excellent. Well, maybe you know, we need a music program, <laughs> music I, I genealogy. Think, <laughs> I think Jessica mentioned this, that you know, marriages don't often, I mean, oftentimes do not work out. So, uh, and I, I know in my own family history, I have sort of a, a, a multi-generational dysfunction involving this divorce. Uh, so divorce is something that's strangely close to my heart. And, and we want to, uh, <laughs> we want to include that as part of this Valentine's theme as well. So if you have a divorce story that you want to tell. Um, well, some of the most interesting records are those early divorce cases. There's all kinds of details in there. Yeah. And, and there, you know, there are certain places in the country that sort of their reason, one of their reasons for being was the divorce industry, like Reno, Nevada, where we lived for a period of time and where my grandmother went to get divorced in 1937. You'll have to share that story. Okay, so anything else uh, for the go to the order? I would like, if you're a program committee member, I'd like you to stay on for a few minutes. Um, does anybody else have any announcements or um, things that they want to share before we go? Okay, well, let's take, let's take about a three minute break and we'll reconvene as the program committee at two o'clock. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you, especially Natalie for your presentation. Uh, fantastic job. Thank you.